So what equipment do you need to get started with colored pencils? Obviously, you're going to need colored pencils. So I'm going to take a look at that. The other thing that you will need is a pencil sharpener. We'll take a look at those. And if you're like most mortals, you'll probably need an eraser. Somewhere down the line, you're going to probably want a drawing board of some sort, preferably a drawing table although there are tabletop easels which are quite good and if you prefer to stand while you're working there are other easels which we will look at in another video today i want to look at the uh, the main types of pencils and and the differences between them and uh, so let's get started so let's look at these pencils first we have the derwent studio pencils they're my favorite for a variety of reasons uh, which we'll get into. We also have the Derwent Color Soft. We have the Derwent Artist pencils. We have the Polychromos made by Faber Castell. And we have the Prismacolor pencils. They're probably the most popular pencil in North America. Artist pencils, which are the ones I like, they're, they're probably my favorite pencil. They uh, have a nice smooth lay down that's a nice dry feel, lots of rich color. They also have a couple of other variations. The artist pencil. It's a very similar feel. It's a little waxier. It's a round pencil. Um, the hexagonal pencil, as you saw, stays put when you lay it down. The, the, the round pencils will roll around on you, sometimes off the table with not so pleasant consequences. The uh, Color Soft by Derwent. Again, a nice smooth lay down, probably the smoothest on the Derwent. The, uh, they're a little waxier than the other two. Another pencil that I really, really like is the uh, Faber-Castell Polychromos. These are an oil-based pencil. And they have a, the smoothest lay down of almost anything, really. Um, again, very rich colors. The um, Derwent's, the, the Prismacolors, those are all wax-based pencil as opposed to the oil-based for the polychromos. The um, Prismacolor, again, it's a, it's quite a waxy pencil. It has, it has a very smooth lay down. It's very, uh, you know, very good. They've got very good colors, good range of colors. Uh, they have a range of grays that are unparalleled and no nobody else comes close on their their grays um, and it's a beautiful range they have a, a french grays in a, in a range from 10 percent to uh, i guess 90 percent and they have a range of warm grays and they have a range of cool grays uh, again in the the 10 steps beautiful wonderful to work with i have a couple of minor issues with the the uh, Prismacolor that I don't run into with the other pencils. One of them, I don't know if it will show up here, um, but the the pencil, the leads sometimes are off-center. And what happens when the leads are off-center is that they will break when you try to sharpen them. The other issue is that you will get more wood on one side of the pencil than you have on the other. And in an extreme situation, that can lead to the wood actually, there being no lead on one side and it will scratch the paper or maybe even tear the paper. Not pleasant. There are many other brands, all well worth trying. The one thing I would caution you is do not buy anything other than artist grade pencils. They don't have the pigmentation. They will be a waste of money, a waste of time and effort. In addition to that, one of the tools that I think you will need is as you sharpen your pencils, 
the risk of stating the obvious, they will get shorter. I've never sharpened a pencil and had it get longer. So when your pencil gets short, it becomes a little awkward to use. There is a little device called a pencil extender. And this one you can see is well worn. I've had this one for a number of years. I, these are made, I believe, by General Pencil. They're readily available. They're probably the least expensive pencil extender out there. They're probably the best. They have a little tube slit on the sides. You put the pencil in. You slide the collar to sharpen it. Derwent puts out a set of these. Uh, they're uh, aluminum, and they have a similar situation except that you uh, it's a twist lock and they're very good they come in two different sizes uh, what I find on this one is it's a little small for the polychromos which is a fatter pencil the nice thing is that it extends the pencil back to a workable size workable length the other thing that these things are indispensable for is when you're working on a drawing you really don't want to be if you're working the way I work you really don't want to be touching the surface. You don't want to be touching where you've been applying color. So this allows you to extend a full length pencil all the way across your sheet and lay down color without having to touch the actual drawing itself. Very, very handy. Other than that, I wanted to look at erasers. So I'm going to just lay down a little bit of graphite here, and I'm going to show you something with erasers. So, this is just a 4B Derwent sketching pencil. The pencil eraser that I prefer is this one. It's a Stadler Kneadable Eraser. And the way these work is you take and you tear off a small piece. You don't need a large piece. Again, it depends on how you work. And you need it, like bread. Bread dough, right? And what that does is it cleans it up. It also warms it up. It makes it a little sticky. And it's really good for lifting off color without damaging the paper. It's, uh, it's my go-to eraser for virtually everything. Now, if you've laid stuff down quite heavily, then it doesn't lift quite as well. I'll show you that here. So let's lay something down really heavy. We said hexagonal pencils don't roll. So you see that's not lifting a whole lot. Of course, the other type of eraser is the standard vinyl eraser. You find them on the ends of pencils, mechanical pencils, more than, than uh, regular wooden pencils. You can also get these in a pencil shape where they're various sizes, and it's just, you click them down. These, these erase quite well as, as also. But they leave a lot of mess on the, on the thing. And on some of the softer papers, they can actually damage the paper. Derwent uh, makes an electric eraser. There are also several other versions available. And these, these are quite handy if you like using a vinyl eraser. There's another little tool that I think is indispensable. And that's this thing. That's called an eraser shield. And it's good for cleaning up edges or inserting highlights in places where you want them. Uh, you can clean up this edge very easily. Okay. The other thing that they're very good for is all these little dots here. If you need to pull out a highlight in somewhere. All right. There you go. Handy, handy, handy. I wouldn't be without one. There is another type of eraser. Um, it's, it's okay for working with graphite. Uh, it's the gum eraser. You've seen these, I'm sure. Okay. But what it tends to do is it tends to smudge. It will eventually clean up, 
but you've got lots of debris on your drawing table. However, if you need something to smudge color, there you go. It will smudge the color for you, and it will do quite a good job at that. The other thing you got to watch for with any of these erasers is transfer. They will sometimes transfer color. The vinyl eraser, much less so than, than the gum eraser. And the kneadable eraser doesn't transfer color either. So, But with the kneadable eraser, you will get color on the eraser. And what you do is you just knead it into the eraser. And then you end up with a nice clean surface and away you go. Now let's look at sharpeners. As for pencil sharpeners, you've all seen variations on this one. Um, yeah, they're okay if you're out in the middle of a field somewhere sketching and you don't have any other option. That's fine. For me, the only real type of pencil sharpener that's worth considering is something along this line. Okay, it's a crank pencil sharpener. It's the type you used to have, you know, mounted by the blackboard in school. Okay, it has a drawer at the bottom to catch all your shavings. The section at the top pulls out, like so. There's a little knob on the side here. Can you see it? Yeah. And you push that to put the pencil. Okay, so I can do this. So you push the knob on the side, you put the pencil in, you turn the crank, and it will stop when it's sharp. You see the pencil is now very sharp. That's the way I like my pencils. There is a knob on the back here where you can adjust how sharp the pencil sharpener will make, make your point. These also have a clamp that fits in the hole at the back and the bottom. So, and you then adjust the wing nut to tighten it to your desk. In my opinion, those are the only ones worth considering. What you have to watch for, uh, battery operated ones are good, as are the electric ones. They're, very, they're a variation on this. The thing you need to watch for, especially in the battery operated ones, is that it is a grinder inside to sharpen, not a variation on this. Some of the battery operated ones just have this little thing inside and it just turns it for you, that's all it does. They're awkward at best, they, they tend to break a lot of leads. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, I hope you've got something out of it. Um, if you have, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to click the notification so that you'll know when I post another video. Next time we're going to look at maybe, we'll look at some of the work that I do and uh, I'll share my technique on how I produce those, those pieces with you. Look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, stay safe. Take care.